Hi everybody. So far, we've been looking at JavaScript a whole lot, but we've been looking at it in isolation. We've been looking at it in terms of snippets of code and just like larger snippets of code, but we really haven't seen how well it plays with a normal web page, with the things you see in the browser. And that's what this video is going to help you with. In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between JavaScript, the browser, and this thing we're going to currently call the DOM. And it's a short one, but it's going to be packed with a lot of information. So let's get started. So here's the thing. As you know, when you visit a web page, there are several components that make it up. You have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML, it defines the structure. So for as an example of what an HTML page looks like, let me go to my Atom code editor. And here we have an, a typical HTML page. You have some tags, you see some structure, you have some parents, some children, and just a variety of things. Like for example, an image tag is used for displaying images. A heading tag displays headings with like slightly larger font. And I'm calling these things out because each of these tags has a very particular value, not just in a semantic view, but also in terms of what functionality it exposes as you as a developer to do cool things with. And with where you have HTML, you also have CSS because by default, your HTML content looks kind of plain, looks kind of boring. It's really up to your browser to make it look the way it needs to look. And oftentimes it's not particularly pretty. And to help make that change, to help change it to look a little cool, you have CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, and they help provide the appearance and styling. So a CSS style sheet looks very similar to this. You have various, you have a very format for it and all these contain little mappings between what your HTML shows and what you can target using CSS known as a selector. And you have a bunch of properties and values that help define the various things that your elements will do and how they will appear, more specifically how they'll appear. So the, then we get to you know, the thing that we've been spending the most of our time on, that is JavaScript. So at the very beginning, we talked about JavaScript and, and it's part of the introduction. We learned that JavaScript deals with interactivity. And I'm, I'm adding this part in and everything else, a little tongue in cheek comment, but it's true. With JavaScript, you can not only deal with just dealing with the things that users, users like you will be doing to the page, but you can actually modify a whole lot more. You can actually change everything that's going on in your page very easily, including your HTML and CSS content. Now, I'll let that sink in for a moment where I'm saying that JavaScript has the ability to modify not only the things that happen in its own domain, but also things that happen in HTML and CSS. And the reason it is possible is because it's special glue, the special glue that ties your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript together. And that glue is called the document object model, or as all the cool people like us call it, the DOM, just a simple word, the DOM. And here's what a DOM really is. Your DOM is an object representation. You know, we learned about objects and stuff in JavaScript. Think of it, uh, your DOM is an object representation of your entire HTML document. So for example, here's a tree view of what the page we looked at earlier might look like in this DOM world. Now this is a very simplified view, but there are some things I want you to point out. At the very top of your DOM, you have something known as the window object. Now the window isn't a true member of the DOM, but I like to keep it in this arrangement just to help you visualize it better. So you have the window, and I'm gonna call it an object for now because that is really what it is. And under window, you have the document object. And this object acts as the, as the gateway to all the content that is currently going on in your page. And all of that content is in the form of HTML, head, body, all the various tags you saw in our HTML earlier is now represented in object form. And here's what makes it interesting. There's a formal name for everything you see here. And that formal name is nodes. Now, when I talk about nodes, I'm not just talking about the HTML elements that you see in this particular view. I'm talking about everything that includes your attributes, your HTML attributes, text content, comments, and various other things. These are things that your browser creates for every piece of HTML that you use. So while we may see a simple P tag or an image tag or a heading tag, your browser expands upon that, creates a tree view, and creates all of these various you know, objects to help make it easy for you to access them and modify them if you so choose. And that mapping is done through this particular hierarchy. At the root, you have the node interface, and below they have element, and then you have HTML element. Th that's not particularly interesting. What is interesting, though, is everything that lives off of HTML element. Every HTML element that you use has a JavaScript equivalent representation. In this case, for example, HTML BR element represents the BR tag, HTML button element represents the button tag, HTML div element represents your div tag, and, and so on. And you can see that every single thing you use in HTML has an object representation that backs it. And the reason that's pretty important is this. By having an object representation, you can not only access these elements in JavaScript, which we'll look into in future videos, but it also allows you to modify them as well. Not only can you read, you can also write and modify, and then we will see even further down the road, 
you can also create elements dynamically, add them to the DOM, which in turn adds them to what you see in the browser. So those are some of the things that make JavaScript really cool for making things work. So before we leave, I just want to leave you with two little things. The, the top of the DOM, as I, or the view of the DOM that I talked about, we had the window. So the window object is really the thing that you know is browser specific. It has all the various properties and events that relate to your browser window, or more specifically, the tab inside of it. And we'll look at some of the properties that will let live off of it, and the things that we will rely on in the window object to do some of the things that are that you probably take for granted. And well, the most of our time, though, was spent in the document object itself. And this document object is off of window, and it is basically the entryway to everything your current page provides. All of the content, all of these things, live off of properties or sub-properties or nested properties of the document object, and we'll see a lot of that as well. So with that, I'm going to leave you to it. So as you know, the DOM is one of those things where I give you a very quick, lightning-fast, bird's eye view overview of what the dom and what the dom does and explain a little bit about its importance but it's one of those things where as you'll see in subsequent videos you can't really go very far without touching on to something that dom does or any api the dom provides so that makes it really cool so to learn more go to crypto.com if you have any questions easiest way is to post in the forums at forum.crypto.com where me or a bunch of other people who probably love the dom as much as me Probably not. I love the DOM a whole lot. So post in the forums though, someone will get back to you. And you can find me on Krupa on facebook.com slash Krupa or on YouTube. I'm all over the place. So just message me. Try to get back to you quickly. And of course, if you like this, tell your friends and enemies. Hit subscribe to get the subscriber count up. You know, I've realized that some of these, you know, pop artists have like millions and millions and millions of subscribers. I feel like JavaScript tutorials and HTML and web development tutorials are probably as pop as the cool stuff that people listen to on the radio. At least I think so. So hit subscribe to prove me right. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook to find you know, more bite-sized updates on cool things that I find or things that you might find interesting. And of course, if you're into books and not just into videos or reading things on a screen, on a Kindle screen, you know, check out my new book, JavaScript, Absolute Beginner's Guide. It actually contains a lot of material about the DOM and some of the topics you searched about or watched a few months ago. So definitely check it out. And with that, I will see you guys next time.